Hey, it's Mr. Leatherwood, and these are my notes on adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. Uh, you'll notice that my examples match the one in the videos, and I wanted to kind of walk you through how I take my notes. I start by titling my page, so it's the adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators video, so that's what I titled it with. And then I started taking important information. Uh, one thing that I stated in the video was... When adding and subtracting fractions, the denominator has to be the same all the time. So I thought that was an important information, so I wrote it in red. And I like to use colors when I take notes. I'll use one color kind of for general information, and then I'll use a bright color for important information. And adding and subtracting fractions and the denominator has to be the same is very important. So I wrote that in red. Then I started going through the examples just like they did on the video. So we start with example one. An example one is three fourths plus two fourths. So if you notice, I wrote a model of, I wrote the numbers out, and then I wrote the model just like they did on the video, and then I went through the problem. On example two, it was two six plus three six. Did the same thing. I wrote the model just like they did in the video, and then I made a special note that the denominator always stays the same when adding and subtracting. It's very important that I remember that, so I wrote that in red and I circled the denominator. Then they moved on to subtraction. So I did 5, 6 minus 3, 6, just like they did in the video. I drew the model just like they did in the video. Now, I really wanted to remind myself that there was only one model when I did subtraction, which is different from what I did when I was doing my addition. So I thought that was important, so I circled it and then wrote a little note out to the red. Now, you'll notice on example 2, 5 8 minus 2 8 equals 3 8. I did something a little different. I think this is important when you're doing math is to break it down in steps. Um, so what I did is I numbered my steps, color in the first number, and then I numbered my model, what I actually did. Mark out the number being subtracted, which was model number two, and then number three, the amount left over, is your answer. So I wrote it step by step, so it was a little bit more detailed for me when I went back on my notes later. I think doing the steps like this would have been good in all the samples. So example one, example two, with addition, it also would have been good to write out these steps. Um, and I kind of wish I would have done that because in math, remembering these steps may not be easy when you go back and look at your notes. But if you're, you write them out to the side like this, you can always review your notes and kind of go back through the process. You'll also know I use, used red to remind myself the denominators always stay the same. One last thing on my notes is I try to include practice problems. And these were just made up. They weren't on the video. Maybe you get your mom or dad or someone to create some problems for you. But I usually try to do four problems just to give me some practice on what I just learned. Uh, this is a good review of your material, and you can go back and use your notes to answer these problems. I think it's a good idea. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I used the Telegami app to, to make this one, so try it out on your own. Have a good day.